Welcome to Motard. Uh, today I'm going to be working on this 2001 Honda CBR F4i. Um, I picked it up for $2,000. It's got 46,000 miles on it. Obviously not the correct plastics here. That's wrong. I did verify VIN and it says it under the rear seat here. Um, Picked it up for $2,000, 46,000 miles on it. It runs. It runs very well. It's very fun. Um, but it's pretty high miles. I mean, I've heard of these going over 100,000, actually. But I want to do some preventative maintenance. I've already done some stuff. Um, let's see, namely oil change, coolant flush. Um, what else did I do? the front turn signals. Um, I did lay it down once in the driveway, of course, standing still. That's what that scratch is. I did get it in fairly good condition. Um, once I get this fairing off, though, I'll show you something that is a bit concerning to me. So I bought this from a guy who was not at all sketchy. And he had replaced the, uh, bearings with, like I said, these incorrect ones, and he also replaced the screws with aluminum screws, presumably to save some weight. I don't know how many fractions of an ounce that would save, um, but I kind of hate them. They don't match. They're odd colors, and I'm colorblind, but I can tell that they're weird, um, so I think I need to get rid of these, but... You mainly find the ones on, oh, that one fell off, whoops, um, you mainly just find the aluminum ones though, they don't say steel anywhere, so, I don't know, I have to find those, at some point here. Okay, and then there's one right here and one right here, Phillips head. Okay, then there's these kind of clip uh, push pin things pry out of the bottom and kind of push them to the top. There we go. Forgot we got to break out the other must-have accessory, the Harvard Freight lifter upper. Yeah, good enough. All right. Let's get this side out. Same thing over here. Three mismatched screws up front. Two missing from the other side are here and somewhere down there. Keep taking them out and pulling on it, and if it doesn't come out, then you you miss the screw. My hot tip of the day. Well, silly me, I forgot to hit record. But basically, you take out all the same screws on this side, and this big black plasticky thing that goes down to the front 
in the middle stays on this side. That's the way to do it. All right, now I got to strip down. Give you a closer look here. Um, it looks okay. Did the oil filter, of course. Um, it's pretty dirty in some spots. There's definitely been some leaks here and there. Um, but I think overall, for two grand, right now in a market that um, used motorcycles, there's never been a hotter market than right now. So I think all in all, I haven't seen anything pop up uh, on either Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist that I would have wanted. This is fake, by the way. That's a fake Yoshimura. I bought the very expensive clamp from Yoshimura. Got it shipped out. Didn't fit. Not even close. The loop was way too big. So I ordered this dealie on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Spent a good hour bending it. Came in a perfect circle. But I think it came out all right. It serves its purpose. It doesn't wiggle anymore. This is my Helite Turtle 2 tether. Those discerning of you will notice. Of course, you got to add the uh, quick battery disconnect. Okay. This is what concerns me. I feel like this doesn't look right. I know this looks similar, but that's on the other side as well. This is looking at the other side. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to look like. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, that gives us a big old clue as to what this bike might have been through. Just another quick comparison. Yeah. Okay. I thought long and hard about calling it at night, but five millimeter. Five millimeter. For mine anyway, this is probably not factory. I'm gonna keep going for now. I'll look up the part number for that bolt. And it's probably stripped out. And they probably just went super big threads on the bolt, because why not? So a factory bolt probably won't work, but maybe I can find something a little less janky. Okay, so once that's off, just yank it! No, you have to take more plastic off. All right, we gotta take this piece off right here. It's just two bolts, one right here, one right here, but there is like this pin thing you gotta pop out. I think I'm missing, I think there's supposed to be a piece right there, I'm not sure, I think I'm missing that. If you know, leave it in the comments. metal components. Same thing for this other side, except for, again, not factory. This is a hex head. All the other ones are star. This one's a hex. So I do the right thing and use the equivalent star bit on it. So I've got time. Find the right one. And this front one. Small. Uh, eBay lever, that should be fine, right? Carefully put 
that away. You'll notice my duct tape, because it is kind of a weird design, Honda. Nope. The thing that holds up this is a little wire with a loop on it. I don't know. Nope. It's really easy for it to slip off, so get some of that uh, duct tape on there. Now the whole front kind of come off. And there's a couple connections on this side. I guess mainly just this one. Kind of a bugger though if you haven't gotten it out in a while. There you go. Whole thing lift right off. Alright, here's a little tour around instrument cluster and all this stuff down here it does start rubbing against the inside there every once in a while so kind of want to get that up and out of the way I don't know how much of this is factory and what's not see this weirdo thing that's I don't know Honda not a fan so we'll put that back on there I'll fix it for you um I also need to do brake juice at some point. DOT4 says it right there. Um, and I'm also going to fully remove the gas tank, not just tip it out of the way like you see most people do. I've done that a few times. Uh, but I'm going to get it fully out of the way so we don't have to deal with that. So, And I'm definitely just going to ignore that for right now. Alright, so I griped about those things holding up the air ducts up there. This is the other thing I'm going to gripe about. I feel like this is very inelegant, Honda. I feel like you're better than this. Something that just moved the seat out of the way. I don't know. I think you could have done better. But, this is what it is. There's two bolts back here. Gotta get me some of those T-handles. That's what I need. Taking back my registration. Yeah, this is the ECU thingy. Pretty dusty, grimy, and there's some uh, custom wiring jobs going on in here too. I'll take a look at those later, but for now. Got these two bolts right here for me they're again different this is a six millimeter these were fives Back to the five millimeter for me. I don't know what's factory. This one has a little washer. I don't think that's right because this other one's a different size. It does have the rubbery grommets though. Also, these these have these are inserts. They go all the way through. So be careful you, you don't lose this. Alright. Now there's a whole mess of things underneath here. I ran this as far on empty as I humanly could. And I can still tell there's gas in there, so that's empty. I mean, that's interesting. It's not as empty as I thought it would be, but basically you can take a um, bungee cord, get a bungee cord up top here, run it to the back, but I want to disconnect 
all that good stuff right there. Alright, here's what you're looking at down there. You can't really see anything. With the cardboard over there, it looks like there's this one sensor. There's this hose to right there, and then there's this fitting. This hose comes like this. Um, I think the other side of that fitting is pretty in there too. So the other side of that fitting comes into here. I think this is the easier side from what I'm seeing. So I think I'm going to disconnect it here. And then the other one's at the tank underneath there. Okay, new week. Getting over being sick, sorry for my voice. Um, I started getting replacements for this. I'm gonna get, uh, this is a nut for it, and I've got some spacers coming, and I gotta order the screw. Um, but I'm gonna try to replace that and hope that they didn't mucker it up too much. Um, haven't gotten any farther on this. Just basically not done a whole lot, so let's get that gas tank off. Okay, we're going to take it off from this side. So to start, I'm going to get this connector undone. Put that over there. Then, okay, this line right here swoops up into this one right here. This is connected on both sides with one of these type connectors, so I think I'm going to try to get it out right there. And this is the vent tube that goes all the way down to the ground on this side over here. So I'm going to start doing that. Still got a little tickle of gas in there. See if I can kind of prop that out of the way. All right. Gas is one of the best solvents. Um, you should definitely use it to clean most things, in my opinion. It's great. Good stuff. Hmm. Yep, there we go. All right. Alright, so this part right here is a 17 millimeter. Oh yeah, we're already tripping. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, so there's still way more gas in there than I thought. So. Oh, I think I did disconnect this from this little vent right there, too. But I think other than that, get you a good look in here. Okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to move the gas tank over, scoot it above this here, go straight into the tank. I think that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to spill at least a gallon and a half of gas on the way even though I ran this thing so far after it had been blinking at me to like stop I am so surprised but I guess they really don't want you running out so I take that for what it's worth or don't don't sue me for running out of gas somewhere let's see here how much more more ghetto can I get here? Okay. Still pretty loose. Okay. 
a little drip. Come on. And when I said clean things with gas, I definitely don't want to clean plastic components. So go ahead and get that all over your nice red fairings right there. That's what you definitely want to do. Of course, now it's just trickling. Barely coming out. I think I even needed my gas tank there. Just gonna start gushing out there. It's coming a little bit. Yeah, okay, not too much. This is dripping. I should probably. Hmm, that's interesting. I can hear it inside, but no more is coming out. Right there. Okay. Put that on a nice paper towel, nice and clean actually, that's a good sign. It's gonna stay right there, it's not groom enough. I guess that's more from the line. Even from the tank. That's interesting. Okay, now I think... Yeah, let's see where this is just a vent tube, so... Oh, we do need this to stay behind. Oh, yeah, that's definitely in the line there. Oh, there's a really important um, crush washer thingy there. Don't lose that. There's one on the banjo bolt. Okay, we're just gonna get that free. A little bit more gas come out. Then we should be good to go. Where does this go? Oh yeah, that's what we already disconnected there. Okay. I think it's pretty much ready to go. Almost done dripping. Okay, I cheated a little bit and started pulling, but you'll see the vent tube come all the way out. From down there, yep. A little spritz of gas. Put this over here. Kind of rest it forward. It doesn't spill your gas everywhere if you're low enough, anyway. So that's what things look like in the open air. We disconnected it right here. That stayed with the tank. The vent tube went around this side of the shock and down. This was on. I think supposed to actually be on but was disconnected maybe. I don't know, we'll have to trace that. And that's in there. Air box, I did put a can in in here as well. That's another thing. All right, now we're gonna remove the air box cover here. There's a total of 10 uh, bolts around here, plus one in the center. And then we also need to remove this little sensor right here. Forget, yeah, push that. Jiggle it a little bit, we'll just tuck that up there. Then we'll get all of the bolts out.
realized I uh, packed this up a little bit too early. There was still missed out on a couple weeks of riding weather around here in the Reno area. It's kind of a bummer, but there had already been snow on the ground and quite a bit of it. So I figured oh, I won't need my 600cc sport bike, but should have known. That's just first winter. We're in second fall right now, almost second winter, real winter. It's coming up. And it's going to be a part for a while, so that's all. I need to do the brake fluid. Oops. This little Harbor Freight deal is pretty handy, actually. Come on. Crazy, and the filter still looks pretty much brand new. I only ran it for a couple hundred miles, if that. Since I replaced it, a lot of dust on the sides, though, a lot of dust. So it's definitely working. It doesn't fit actually quite as well as the factory, though. I'm a little disappointed. It's the HA-6001 model from K and N. That's what I got anyway. Okay. Oh yeah, there's some real dust in there. Hmm. And throttle bodies as well. That's not good. Hmm. I'm gonna take this out and see what we're working with here. Definitely bent. Kind of hard to see, but this is definitely bent. A lot of metal, too. Kind of what I feared. There's no bolt on the parts diagram that matches this. Let's figure out what thread pitch this is. Okay. Unhook these. Then you just kind of squeeze these until you pop the seal there. This kind of ridge goes, plastic goes in between these two right here. are labeled on the inside there right being as you're writing it are right. now there's six screws one two three four five six
feel the need to reiterate. I have no idea what I'm doing. So, I'm only doing what I've seen in other YouTube videos, basically. So. off. This lifts off. Got a few things plugged into it, it looks like. Looks like the first one right here. Take that off. This one. Here, this bigger one, should, I think, like a breather for the cooling system. And this little one right there. Oh, there's one more. Oh, I see. This connector is still connected to the bottom. Oh, there's one little screw right there we gotta take out. Probably gonna lose that, but there's that free. Pretty dirty, but I guess that's not the part you see. I think what I'm gonna do here a little duct tape on there that's sure to fall off and I will still lose the screw but at least we tried right okay a little dirty not too dirty okay got a new new bolt just gonna hit that WD40 Okay, there's probably some torque setting I was supposed to put that to, but 
That's all right. Okay, so apparently, gotta unplug. Unplug this. This does make it a lot easier, actually. Pull this out. And the spark plug is in there. I'll say I did get lucky. This has been in my ratchet tool set the entire time. Never paid it a second look. But it's exactly for this. Oh wow, that's deep. Okay, I'm gonna need to find an extension. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Catch it right there. Nope. There we go. It's torque in there pretty good. Nope, didn't come with it. Okay. Let's see if hmm. This is knurled edges. I don't really want to. Hmm. Okay, here's what I'm going to try. I think if I didn't have a handle on there, it would work. Okay, I finally got my new tool, nice and sharp on the end. A piece of the cheapest, crappiest duct tape ever constructed. No way. Okay. Guess I have to take this off. Of course, it's an eight millimeter. Lose it. So I want to pick it up. Confident. Uh oh. Just wasn't out all the way. I needed to focus on that. Let's take a look. Yeah, pretty fouled. Pretty 
she fell. Some soot. So I forgot I'm taking this off, so I don't really need to um, remove spark plugs in the way I was doing it. And of course, I lost my good screwdriver. It's this one. Got that nice plasticky crackle of something that's just about to break. There we go. Make sure we keep those straight. This number three. number three this one's the dirty I mean number two sorry this one's the dirtiest so far We we're supposed to take throttle bodies off first. There's a hole right here and a little um, hose clamp on the bottom of each of these. And the two on the outsides, you go through the frame, the little hole here. And for the inside ones, you go from the top here. Okay, scratch that actually. The inside ones are from the sides. That's why you need an extra long. Extra long one. 
it's going all the way to this one. Okay, to the other side. Okay, way harder to see on this side. But I am on it. I'm not even sure this needs to come off, but I'm going to take it off. lost this washer down there. Well, at least at least these look relatively clean. Still doesn't seem to want to come out though. I'm sure this is not the way to do it, but I don't know what else to do. Okay, I finally got it pulled free, disconnected this from this right here, looks like we got at least a couple more this line to this T. accidentally over here.
one goes into the bottom four way. It's plugged into this thing, so I think if we unplug this, it'll come free. And this is the one. Well, maybe I didn't yank it free because that's just like an adjustment thing on this side. So I think it's just these two. I'll go ahead and take those off. Still quite a bit of fuel on that line. I tuck it on this side of the frame to let us know that it's this side toward the rear. hose clamp try it from the other side And then there's 
three. Bolt. And on this side. See, one is right there. One is right here. The other is just on the other side of this right there. Ten millimeter. Okay, I got it loose. Okay, I figured out the um, timing marks on the side here. Down here, I was just looking at it the wrong way. They are actually good. Um, please like, comment, or subscribe. And I just want to reiterate, I have no idea what the heck I'm doing. I'm just uh, following along with other people. Um, if you liked it, appreciate it. And next, uh, I will. I've done the... Uh, valve checks. I've got all my measurements right here, and I will be doing, in fact, a valve adjustment. So that'll be next, along with a bunch of other things. Thanks for watching.